Despite its auspicious beginnings, it's probably fair to describe it as one of the lesser-known 3D modeling and animation programs available today. In fact, in a number of surveys, it doesn't even make the top 10 list of such design tools. But here are a few reasons why I still use Bryce. I first started using Bryce in 2005, when I was asked by my then employers, a Swedish construction company based in the Middle East, to create a small documentary film about our epic scale project, one of the biggest in the world at that time and since. It was a time when online video was gathering worldwide popularity, as YouTube was taking its first steps towards becoming the global platform that it is today. But in order to make my documentary film, I didn't always have access to video footage that would support the storyboard. So Bryce was very helpful for creating animated scenes that could be used as backdrops to the subject matter. In particular scenes where traditional video footage would not have been available anyway. Learning an animation program and simultaneously working on an actual film isn't necessarily the best approach to filmmaking. And I now cringe when looking back on some of that old material. But at the time it seemed to meet most production requirements. And besides, I cringe when I look back at stuff I created last year, let alone 15 years ago. The explosion of new 3D animation software that has taken place over the last several years has pushed Bryce out of the consciousness of most designers. In fact, some may not have even heard of it. Furthermore, it would appear that it is no longer being developed, and its last stable issue, version 7.1, was released way back in 2010, which, to my slight embarrassment, is the version that I still use today. So why do I still use it? For me, it's still a quick and easy way to create convincing environments and landscapes, such as a Grand Canyon-esque desert similar to the Bryce Canyon National Park in the United States, from which Bryce Software gets its name, and to easily populate that scene with moving objects containing blue skies or clouds, and even fake snow, and this is all done relatively quickly. Even the many built-in default settings of Bryce will probably satisfy most animation design requirements. Okay, yes, I hear the cries, that's what all modern 3D packages and landscape creation programs can or should do, and arguably do it better than Bryce, so why do I really still use it? I suppose there's no escaping the simple fact that I still use Bryce because I'm quite familiar with most or many of its workings, and I really just can't be bothered to learn a new package, or as I try to convince myself, I don't have the time to learn a new package, when completion of whatever project I'm currently working on is of greater importance than taking time out to learn the latest and greatest. Am I lying to myself? Yes, probably. And the irony of the circumstances in which I first started using the program all those years ago isn't lost on me. But I still think Bryce has a place in graphic design, certainly in my little world of design. And the advent of improved video assembly and editing programs, such as the current iterations of Photoshop, which make importing videos or still frame sequences, no matter what they were created with, so much easier, I really don't find any great motivation to get to grips with more recent 3D software. That's not to say I don't use them. 3DS Max, for example, is my personal favourite 3D modeler and static scene render program. But for the time being, I'm going to hang on to Bryce, at least for a while longer and hope that not too many people find out what a lazy designer I probably am. Of course, Bryce, like any 3D scenery animation program, can't be used entirely by itself, because its 3D modelling capabilities are quite basic, truthfully very basic. So there will always be the need for designers to be familiar with supporting programs such as Maya, Cinema 4D and the 3DS Max that I prefer. So at least in those areas, I do try to keep reasonably current. This video was never intended to be a Bryce tutorial, or even to focus too much on the reasons I started using it. But I did hope to provide some of the personal reasons or excuses 
that I still use it and to showcase some of the animation sequences that I've created in the last few years. All of these sequences were created with Bryce 7.1 and this video was compiled and edited in Photoshop CC 2017. For the record, I have no affiliation or association whatsoever with Bryce. I just like the program. And if you have used Bryce in the past, or like me, still use it today, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see any of my future posts, I'd really appreciate you clicking on the subscribe button.